It's great to see you. If I haven't met you before, I'm Laura and this is Faye. It's been such a long time since we've been together on Sunday mornings. I've really missed coming together as a whole church family. I wonder, Laura, who's with us this morning? Who might be watching at home? I wonder if we might have some children from each of our kids at King's Groups, from Torches and Sparklers and Fireflies and Crash. Well, let's start with my group, the Torches. If you're here this morning and in Torches, can you jump up and shout hello? Hi! Did you hear anything, Faye? Mm, it was a bit quiet. I didn't hear that very well. Come on, you can do better than that. If you're in Torches, jump up off your sofas and shout hello to us. Hello! Hello, Torches! OK, now it's the Sparklers' turn. If you're in Sparklers, stand up on your feet and shout hello to everybody. That was Hello. great. How about the fireflies? If you're in fireflies, can you jump on your feet and shout hello to us? Hello. Hello, fireflies. And now, Crash, maybe you want to give us a little wave from your sofa. Hi. Hello, everyone in Crash. Hi, everyone, and hi to the grown-ups, too. Thanks for joining us this morning. For the next few weeks, we're going to be recording a service for you here in the Appleby Rooms as we get ready to welcome you back for family gatherings once lockdown's done. Each week, we're going to worship God together, learn more about him from the Bible, and we're going to pray. I'm super excited. I'm not feeling very excited at the moment. It's hard being in lockdown again and not being able to see your friends and not being able to go out to church on a Sunday. That's okay, Faye. This lockdown is hard. Sometimes I feel sad too. But you know what? One of the best ways to cheer us up is to remember God and the things he's done for us because he's with us and he loves us and he never changes. Before we sing a song, why don't we remember some of the things God's done for us? For example, I'm really thankful for my friends who had bought pudding over for me last weekend. Wow, that's really kind. They brought pudding over. Yeah. Well, I think I'm thankful for going on lots of walks at the moment and the beautiful colours of the trees and the leaves in autumn. God made such a beautiful world and I'm really thankful for that. We wonder what you are thankful for, families at home. We're going to give you a couple of minutes to talk together as a family and each of you say something that you are thankful for this week. Take two minutes to do that now. I hope you're feeling encouraged from sharing all of those things together. Isn't God good? I'm starting to feel a bit better already. That's great. We're now going to sing together to remember what God is like. Matthew's here to lead us and Faye and I are going to do the actions. Let's do some stretches to warm up. We're going to reach up as high as we can. We're going to reach all the way to this side. 
all the way to that side. And try and touch your toes. See if you can get there. Ooh, see if you can get there. Oh, that's okay. Oh, <sighs> right. Now we're all warmed up. Let's get ready to sing. Matthew's going to lead us. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. My God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, oh you are the peace in my troubled sea. Okay, let's sing this one really quiet. And in the silence, you won't let go. In my questions, your truth will hold. And my God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, you're shining in the darkness. And I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. Oh, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Oh, safe to shore. Safe to shore. Safe to shore. Let's sing, I won't fear. And I won't fear what tomorrow brings With each morning I'll rise and sing My God's love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse you're shining in the darkness. Oh, I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse. Oh, my lighthouse. And I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Oh, safe to shore. Safe to shore. Safe to shore. You will lead us through the storms Far before us, you're the brightest You will lead us through the storm Once more, far before us, you're the brightest You will lead us through the storm My lighthouse, oh my lighthouse you're shining in the darkness, and I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, and I will trust the promise, you will carry me, my light, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, you're shining in the darkness, oh, I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, oh, my lighthouse, you're shining in the darkness, I will follow you, my light. You're shining in the darkness. I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. And I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, oh, oh, oh. safe to shore, oh, oh, oh. safe to shore. Well done, everyone. Now it's time for us to look at the Bible. Over the past few weeks, we've looked at characters such as Samson and Gideon and Joshua and how when they put their trust in God, he helped them. The grown-ups have been looking at the book of Hebrews on Sunday mornings. Hebrews was a letter written to a group of people who were really struggling 
and they were going to give up on, they were even thinking of giving up on their faith. So the letter talks about some characters in the Old Testament and how they trusted in God to encourage them. I think like them, we're all having a hard time at the moment, aren't we? It's hard being back in lockdown. I'm not sure that I've got hope that things are gonna get, ever get better again. That's how the Hebrews were feeling. They were really struggling. But the writer of the letter gives them some encouragement to help them keep on going. Really? I could use some encouragement at the moment. Well, why don't we have a look at what the letter says? You've got the letter there. I've got a copy of it. So, in Hebrews 10, verse 23, it tells us, Let us hold on firmly to the hope we profess, because we can trust God to keep his promises. So, okay, I'm holding on to the hope. But where's this hope? Well, what do you think your hope could be? Well, I'm hoping that one day I can go around to my friend's house again. I'm hoping that one day we can all get back together for church on Sundays. I'm hoping that I won't catch the virus. Well, those are all good things to hope in. But the hope what this is talking about is something slightly different. It's a hope that's always true. We can have hope in God's promises because they're certain. Promises? What promises? Well, in the Old Testament, God makes promises to... Noah, to Moses, to Abraham, to David. But in the New Testament, he makes a promise that because of Jesus, we can always be near to him and be with him. Wow, that's such good news that I can always be near to God because I can't be near to my friends at the moment. That's hard. But because of Jesus, I can be near to God. Yeah, exactly. Can you think of a time where this happened to you? Hmm... Actually, yeah. A few weeks ago, something happened to me when I knew that God was near me. I had to go into hospital. I had to go and have an operation to take my tonsils out, which are in your throat. And I was pretty scared about that. I'd never had an operation before. So I asked lots of friends at church. I sent them some messages and some phone calls and said, please pray for me. I'm feeling worried about this. And on the day, I had so much peace. I was worried because nobody else could come into hospital with me. My husband, Derek, couldn't come and stay with me or come and visit me while I was in hospital, so I was quite alone. But I had peace, and I knew that that meant that God was with me. It was him that was giving me peace because people prayed. It was God that was with me, even though I was alone, away from the people that I knew. It was amazing, and now I know God is near to me. That's true, Laura. That's such a great example of how God can be with us, even when other people can't be at the moment. Okay, so Hebrews says we should hold on to hope in God's promises. Does Hebrews 10 have any other advice for us? I'm glad you asked. Later on in the letter, in the same chapter, it has this advice for us. Let us be concerned for one another. Let us encourage one another. So what does that mean? Who should I be concerned about? Well, I think the writer is encouraging other Christians to think about each other and, you know, not to forget each other when we can't see one another, to support one another in any way that we can. I really want to do that. I really don't want to forget all the people in our church at the moment. And I love doing things to cheer people up. That's really exciting. But how can I do that when we're not allowed to go into people's houses or or meet up very much at the moment? How are we going to do that? Well... What about writing one of these? A letter! We're allowed to write letters to each other and send them in the post. What a good idea. Yes, so this is going to be your challenge for this week. We want you to write a letter. It could be to someone that is in your kids at King's group. It could be to someone that you used to talk to after a service on a Sunday that you haven't seen since March. Okay, so we're all going to write letters and have a think about what you might want to put in your letter. You might want to tell this person what your family's been doing during lockdown. You might want to draw a picture for them and put it in. 
And what we want to do in particular is think about what we've been learning this morning. We've been learning that we need to hold on to God's promises. So why don't you as a family find a promise about God, something God has done in the Bible, and put that in your letter too as an encouragement to the person you are writing a letter to. Have a look at our resource that we've sent out for more information about how to do that at the end of this service. I think it's time for another song. Mm. I know a song that talks about how God has kept all of his promises to lots of people in the Bible, but also to us today. I know which one you're talking about. It talks about how God is good and strong and faithful. Yes. What great promises. Let's sing all through history. Noah built the most enormous boat that kept the birds and animals afloat. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Noah lived his life for him. And Moses led his people through the sea, taking them away from slavery. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Moses lived his life for him. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, that all through history you've been faithful. Thank you, oh, thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to me, when it comes to me. The next verse is about David. David fought Goliath and he won. A humble chapel boy became a king. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and David lived his life for him. And Daniel was inside the lion's den, but God brought him to safety once again. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Daniel lived his life for him. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, that all through history you've been faithful. Thank you, oh, thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to me, when it comes to me. That brings us all the way to Jesus. And Jesus died to take away our sin. That we could get to know our God again. The Lord is good. The Lord is strong. And we will live our lives for him. Let's sing that again. Jesus. And Jesus died to take away our sin. That we could get to know our God again. The Lord is good, the Lord is strong, and we will live our lives for him. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, that all through history you've been faithful. Thank you, oh, thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to me, when it comes to me. So we sing thank you, oh thank you, that all through history you've been faithful. Thank you, oh thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to me, when it comes to me, when it comes to me, when it comes to me. Each week at the family service, we're going to have a time of prayer where we pray for a different topic. This week, our topic is people in the church who aren't involved in this service, but who God loves and we love, and we want to bless them. Let's not forget about the other people in our church. So the first group of people we're going to pray for is the teenagers and the young people. Some of them are studying for mock exams at the moment, and we want to pray that God will bless their studies now and throughout this year. I wonder if you can think of the name of any young person in our church. Why don't you stop now as a family and just see if you can remember any of the teenagers in our church. Why don't you say one of their names out loud? Well, as we pray for the young people, we're going to do this action. 
This is like a book. They're studying books and getting ready for their exams. So why doesn't everyone make this action now as I say a prayer for the young people in our church? Father God, we pray that you would give peace to every young person in our church who are preparing for exams now and this year. We ask that you would bless every young person and that you would encourage them with your promises today. Amen. As we pray for students who've just come to university, we want to ask God to help them make friends. A lot of them have come to a place where they don't know anyone and it's really, really tricky to get to know people at this time when they're not really allowed to mix with people outside of their houses. So we want, we want to ask God to help them make friends and for peace at this time. So what the action we're going to do is this. So hold both your hands together while I pray. Father God, we ask that you would bless each and every student who's just come to Durham University. Would you help them to make friends within their households? And would you help those friendships to last? We ask that you would also bless each and every other student that's in Durham at the moment, especially those that are struggling. Amen. The final group we're going to pray for are the older people in our church family. Lots of them during this time of lockdown have had to be really careful and maybe haven't seen that many people as they've had to stay home to stay safe from the virus. They might be feeling lonely and we want to ask God to comfort them. I wonder if you can think of the name of an older person in our church. Why don't you just talk to each other as a family and see if you can remember one person in our church who's older. Um, see if you can remember their name. The action we're going to do for this prayer is this one. Give yourself a big hug because we want to ask God to help those older people not to feel lonely, that he would, they would know that he is with them. So do this action with me as I pray. Dear God, thank you for all of the older people in our church. Thank you that you're with them. We pray that you will protect them from loneliness and encourage them in this time. Please bless each older person in our church and encourage them with your promises today. Amen. It's time for our final song. This song reminds us that we don't have to fear because God is with us and God is strong. So let's sing, let's dance, let's praise God together. And we won't fear the battle, we won't fear the night. We will walk the valley with you by our side. You will go before us, you will lead the way. We have found a refuge only you can save. So sing with joy now, our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now, no love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Sing even when I stumble, and even when I stumble, even when I fall, even when I turn back, still your love is sure. You will not abandon, you will not forsake, you will cheer me onward with never ending grief. We'll sing with joy now, our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now, no love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for? So sing with joy now, our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now, no love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Neither height nor depth can separate us. Hell and death will not defeat us. He who gave his son to free us holds me in his love. Neither height nor depth 
can separate us. Hell and death will not defeat us. He who gave his son to free us holds me in his love. So sing with joy now. Our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now. No love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Sing with joy now. Our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now. No love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for? Oh, who can stand against us if our God is for us? Thank you so much for coming this morning. It was great to see you. I'm feeling encouraged to hold on to that hope this week, to hold on to the hope in God's promises. And I'm going to go home and write a letter to someone in church to encourage them with that too. Yes, please write a letter this week. And there's also a craft resource which was sent out in the email. Do post your photos on the Facebook group. We'd love to see them and get a sense of togetherness again. One more exciting notice is that this week we're going to restart the sparklers and the torches Zoom calls We've really missed seeing you guys since the summer when we gathered together on Zoom. So we're going to start doing that again on Monday afternoons, 4 o'clock for sparklers and 4.45 for torches. We'd love to see you there to catch up, to play games, to pray for each other as kids at Kings. We'll be back next week at 9.30. We really hope you can join us to learn from Hebrews chapter 11. See you soon. Bye.